If there's one difficulty to making a safe, welcoming, and accessible bike infrastructure into a city, it's availability. To create this infrastructure in cities that have already been designed and built, you will have to alter that environment. This usually means taking out lanes, slowing the speed of cars, and reprofiling intersections. In other words, new design and new construction have to take place. Delivering genuine and desirable outcomes requires labour, financial expenditure, and the sacrifice of the space that preceded it. This real cost is why, in Melbourne, so often cheap alternatives that do not deliver tangible benefits or are actively detrimental to the well-being of people on bikes are delivered instead. As I spoke about in my last video, simple bike lanes, those strips of paint that push bicycles out of the way of cars, are infrastructure for the benefit of people in cars, not for people on bikes. And as I spoke about, bike lanes typically terminate before intersections, leaving people on bikes when they are the most vulnerable to navigate their way through an intersection completely without protection. But how would we make moving through these spaces safer for everyone? Once again, we must look to our friends in the Netherlands. This is a Dutch roundabout, or more properly, it's a roundabout with separated bicycle lanes that are found all over the Netherlands. According to the Dutch Institute for Road Safety Research, roundabouts result in a 46% reduction of casualties at an intersection. They further allow for better traffic flow when the traffic in all directions is roughly equal in volume and, as they do not feature any electronics, are far cheaper to maintain. There is, however, an issue with standard roundabouts in Australia. They do not feature separated bike paths, and as such, bikes are still forced to merge with traffic before entering an intersection, meaning that people on bikes are forced to be aware of both what is in front of them and behind them at the same time. Once they are in the roundabout, they are not safe. In fact, they are at the most vulnerable. There is one type of collision that dominates above all others in terms of incidents and roundabouts, and that is when a car entering a roundabout collides with a person on their bicycle who is already travelling through the roundabout. These collisions in Australia, New Zealand and the United Kingdom make up between 50 and 70% of all incidents. So the solution to get the benefits of both the roundabout and to reduce the risk to the well-being of bicycles would be to remove the bicycle from progressing within the roundabout to prevent this from happening. And this is how designers arrived at the concept of the Dutch roundabout. There are two of these roundabouts in Victoria, both on the same street in South Melbourne, and I decided to have a look at them for myself. These two roundabouts were the first roundabouts with separated bike paths to be introduced, and they were constructed in 2018. And as far as I can tell, they are still the only ones in Victoria. Because of this, they are highly unusual in Victoria, as there are no other junctions of this type around, meaning that they are an exception in the design language to both people who ride their bikes and to people who drive. And this was obvious when I was at the intersection. I also saw a lot of cars who were stopped over the bicycle tracks, forcing the bicycles either to wait for the cars to find their way into the roundabout or to navigate awkwardly around them. This is partly due to the design of these specific roundabouts. The space that these roundabouts were built on are much smaller than the spaces that these roundabouts are placed in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, these roundabouts are designed so that a car can pass the bicycle track and still have enough space to wait for access to the roundabout if a car is already in their way. However, at the Moray Street roundabouts, this isn't the case. This also caused a number of near misses in the relatively short period of time when I was there, as drivers were so focused on merging with traffic into the roundabout that they completely neglected to worry about the bike path that they were crossing. There are two problems, I think, with the Moray Street roundabouts. Firstly, that their footprint is too small for the type of intersection that they are trying to deliver, as if the bike tracks were moved any further back to allow for more space for cars to cross the bike paths before entering the intersection, then pedestrians will quickly be starved of footpath. And secondly, and much more importantly, as long as these are the only two protected bike path roundabouts in Melbourne, you will never have them working smoothly except for the people who use them daily, and because the second anyone who isn't familiar with their language comes through, they probably won't be looking in the right places, and that is enough to eliminate any of the safety benefits that these roundabouts offer. There were more than 3,900 roundabouts in the Netherlands more than a decade ago, and these roundabouts are standardised to feature protection for bicycles, 
meaning that in every city there are tens or maybe even hundreds of these roundabouts that feature protected bicycle lanes. In Melbourne there are two, and they are the exceptions to the rule. And as long as this is the case, people will not understand how to use them safely and to properly navigate them, and they will remain as novelties rather than as useful parts of a safe bicycle infrastructure.